Hi booktube, welcome to Jackie's Larry Corner. I am Jackie, um, and I wanted to film a update video for you guys. Um, so I'm probably going to film a couple videos today because my mom um, might be going to visit my grandmother and um, I don't know if she's leaving this afternoon because she's on call she's so, and she's still sick so she might leave tomorrow but that means I'll probably be spending more time downstairs. Um, although my dad is feeling physically better with his own issues, so I might feel not as bad if I hang out up here and continue to hang out up here a lot. But, like I said, I'm probably going to still hang out downstairs, and that means I'm not going to be doing any filming, because I don't, you know. So I kind of want to film a couple of videos. Um, the next one might be a sort of reading plans video not a tbr because i'm just i have given up on tbrs i like planning and making lists but then i'm not good at following through and then i was just commenting on tristan the classics video about how sometimes i wonder if the reason why some classics i don't get as passionate about classics that i hear about people talking about how brilliant they are all of a sudden i'm like I read it and then it's just not doesn't have the same give me the same passionate feelings that gave that other person and I think it could partly be because I read you know if it's an author that has a backlist of books or has a lot of books they published then I'm like you know rushing through them just to mark them off that I've read them and then I've and I don't want to do that so so yeah it's so, you know, I love making lists. I feel like I should, sometimes it can be a hindrance on my reading. Because, like, I'm just prioritizing of checking off books I'm reading. And then, in a way, I, a TBR is kind of a list. You know, people are like, oh, you gotta get to these books. You know, there's no one forcing me to read these books. It's just, I see them on my shelf. And I'm like, oh, I need to read this book. Rather, sooner rather than later. And then, like... Because, you know, I was, the original plan was I was going to try to go with my mom to my grandmother's house because I had a few, like, three days off. I have three days off currently, but then it just wasn't working out because I would only be, we would, she wants, she needs to stay longer with my grandmother. So it wouldn't make sense if we only go for a couple of days and then turn, and then go home and then she turns back around and then goes back. <laughs> um, so... When I do these trips, I'm, you know, it makes sense that I bring the books I'm currently reading, but then I keep thinking about all the other books that I've, you know, been meaning to read, and I'm like, it's always a process to decide which books do I bring, and I try to narrow it down to two or three, and it never happens. So the good thing, that, one of the good things about me not going is at least I don't have to narrow, you know, I'm not struggling with deciding what books to bring and how feeling like oh I should bring the books I'm one of the, or at least one of the books I'm currently reading but then no I want to bring these books as well and so yeah so that's the one silver lining not being able to go visit my grandmother is because I don't have to you know pick when I want to read I don't have to pick what books I want to bring with me not that that's the most important thing about visiting family but you know, as readers, we want to bring books with us to read during times when we're not doing a lot. And, you know, this is not going to be one of those holiday visits where we're doing a bunch of stuff with the family constantly. This is just a regular visit. You know, my grandma will probably have appointments and stuff. Um, but anyway, so at least I don't have to, so at least I'll have to decide what books to bring. But let's talk about what my current reads. I also recently purchased... A couple books before we um before we um like on kindle i picked two books for kindle it's been, and it was partly motivated by i thought i was in just in case i was going with my mom and part of me was like oh i don't want this i don't want what happened to the nook the barnes and noble e-reader happened to the kindle where i'm all excited at first to have it and just enjoying it and everything but then all of a sudden it's no longer interesting to me. You know, I because I think the idea of the Kindle is really great. And plus, we're still thinking about taking our trip to London anyway. So, I, you know, I'm still going to bring this instead of, you know, physical books. Um, and there's been a couple books I'm interested in anyway that 
I just decided, let me just get them off of Kindle. Instead of trying to worry about buying them. And I will show you those. And I did purchase one more book before the end of January. Although those Kindle books, apparently, even though I ordered them right after midnight. It was like 1 a.m. when I ordered them. When I finally placed the order. And... That I did that on purpose so that because I was like anxious to buy them, so I was like, okay, I'll just wait until 1 a.m. so that will be a new month officially. And when I ordered them, it still said, Oh, you ordered them on January 31st. I was like, No, I didn't. Because once it gets to midnight, it's the next day. It's so it's not, I did not order them on January 30, 34, 31st. I ordered them February 1st. But I guess it's a technicality and the computer is still, Amazon is still counting it as, oh, you ordered them. You still ordered them in January, but you know what? It's, it was basically February because it was after midnight. So it was like, I'm just going to count it as February, part of my February budget. Um, but I will show you those, but let me go ahead and show you the first, well, um, Actually, I'll talk about what I'm currently reading, and then I'll show you the books. Okay. So, like I said, you guys know I finished An Echo of Things to Come, so I went ahead and picked up, started, continued with The Crusades, Islam and Christianity and the Struggle for World Supremacy by Jeffrey Hindley. Um, and this is a lot more detailed and has more facts than the book I read back in November on my e-reader, the, um... The, it was such a long title, but the book about the the um, Knights Templar, um, that was just focusing on them and their history and stuff, and kind of a like easy, more simple version of that, like summing up the history. But still, I mean, still has details, of course. But I feel like it's a good, it's a, like a starting book for when you learn, you know, by captivating history. Well, this one is a lot more detailed and has more information and focuses a lot more on the Christ on the actual war itself and the actual crusades. While that book just kind of mentions the crusades and how there were a lot of them. And like I said, it focuses on, it's called the Knights Templar, so it focuses a lot more on the Knights Templar. Well, this book, like I said, is more about the wars, the crusades that the Knights Templar were involved in. So you get a lot of information on what was going on in... The Middle East at the time, in the war between the Muslims and the Christians, and I just started talking about what was going on with the Jews and what they were coping with, what they were dealing with, and how they were treated. Just a lot of details, a lot of facts that can be all of that is a bit overwhelming at times. So I definitely like I started reading it while I was in bed, reading it to fall asleep to, and then I realized I need to read this when I'm more awake and energized, so I can concentrate and. Con comprehending the material the information instead of like trying to keep my eyes open as they get heavier and heavier <laughs> but um so I like this deep dive into into it and um I like how these nonfiction books have like these actual pictures in it like black and white photos and stuff like that I like I was like looking at them But yeah, I mean, this is really good if you're interested in the, so far this is really interesting if you're, if this topic is something you want to know about, this is really, this is so far, it gives a lot of information about the Crusades. Okay, and then the other book I picked up that I was debating if I want to take it with me or not, both these, these are my current, like I said, these are my current reads, I was debating about bringing them with me in my grandma's house. But then there were a couple other books like Ship of Magic that I wanted to pick up and maybe bring with me. And then one of my most recent purchases back in January, um, particularly the Museum of Abandoned Secrets, I was thinking about bringing that one with me too. And then I started thinking about Les Miserables and just the list just kept getting going back and forth between three and four <laughs> or five. So I picked a gentleman in Moscow. Um, you guys know that I originally got this from the library, but then it's kind of a, it's kind of long. It's not like a it's not like a tome or anything, but it's still a you know a longer book. And it's just kind of the daily life of this man, this count who's when the Bolsheviks 
when the Bolsheviks took over Russia, he was, his punishment was to live in this hotel. Like, he couldn't, he was under house arrest, basically. And he's just trying to, you know, make a life for himself. And this, the Bolsheviks has, have done a limited a lot of things. So, they're... The hotel isn't like the. He talks a lot about the dining, how it's not the same anymore. Um, like they're limited on food that they can get and people that work there. And, um, and he just met the little girl, this little girl, Nina, who is very precocious and she just comes up and talks to him. And at first he's like, like he doesn't want to talk to her and then he's, he tolerates her, but then he actually starts to like her. And enjoy, and he's enjoying their little adventures around the hotel, and realizes that she knows a lot more about the hotel than he does. Like he, she knows a lot of the secrets. Now, there's one minor little annoying thing that, granted, she is just a kid; she doesn't know any better, and she can't help it. And of course, when we're kids or and teenagers too, we think we know everything, and we think we understand things, and um. But how, like, she was asking, and it, it's cute, the conversation where she's asking me how to be a princess. And he explains, like, all about manners, how you should behave, what is expected of you. And then he points out, they're talking, having a conversation about always saying thank you and you're welcome to people when they give you things. They, and she is like, her, I thought she'll say thank you if she asks for something that was given to her. But she doesn't want to say, she feels like she doesn't have to say thank you when it's something that she didn't ask for at the time. And so I'm like, no, you need to say thank you because it's the proper thing, the polite thing and considerate thing because someone put in the effort. And of course, it depends on the thing that they're giving you that you supposedly don't want. That you didn't, or that you didn't ask for. I should say that, the thing that you didn't ask for. They might give you and then you realize you do want it or you need it. It's something that you need. And so it's like someone put in, or it's something that a gift from someone, even though you didn't ask for that gift, you should still say thank you and be appreciative because someone put in the effort. Um, but there are plenty of other things that you might not want that someone gives you that it's not necessarily a good thing. So it was like, so on the one, like, she's a little, she's a kid, she doesn't know any better, but it still kind of made me roll my eyes, like, and I love how she, like, when the count, when the count tries to explain, continues talking again, she does that, no, no, you're wrong, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. And then she also tells him, so the count is like in his, in his 30s, I think, and he, you know, he told her earlier, pointed out that, well, I'm young, and I can't remember why. But he, you know, he explained that he's a young man. And so later, you know, when he points out, well, I have more experience than you do. She's like, wait, no, 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 you don't. Because you said you are young. So you don't have as much experience. So I kind of know the more that made me roll my eyes. It's like typical kid thinks they, you know, typical little kid doesn't know anybody, doesn't understand. And realize that she he does have more experience than she does. And he's old enough to have a good amount of knowledge, foreknowledge, and understanding of things, even though he's not old. Like, you're always learning and always gaining more experiences as you get older, but he has enough that he has more experience to more, better understand than she does <laughs> about things. So I just thought that was kind of like a mix of, you know, I'm like, it's like really kid. And then on the other hand, it's like, she can't help it. You know, she's, she is a kid and she doesn't know any better. And she thinks she knows everything and thinks she's so and thinks she's so smart because that there are a lot of kids who do think that way and think they're really smart. And in a way they are. You know, there are kids that are are very smart and very observant and understanding of the world around them, but they don't know everything. But I mean we all we all get that way when we're I think a lot most of us get that way when we're kids where we think we understand things and there are a lot of kids that are like like her where they're like, Nope, I'm, you know, just acting like they're smarter, even though they are younger and don't have the knowledge, the foreknowledge to know these things, to understand. They just take what they're told, what they've been told and what they've, what they've already learned and just hold on to it and like assume that's 
all they need to know. And um, don't realize they're still learning. But yeah, that it's it's adorable that relationship that they're developing. I do love the writing, and I remember enjoying the writing the first time I read the library copy of this book, and it's just not a lot is going on. It's just kind of this guy's day to day life, and his observing the world around him, and you know, growing and changing, and uh, and oh my god, I feel so bad for him because like. All his books that he loves to read, that he wants to read and he's passionate about, are all back in France. While he all he has is his father's books, which, granted, I imagine those are important to him because they belong to his father. So, they are important. But they're boring to him. He does not like them. They're not his kind of books. But that's all he's got. He's just stuck with this, these books. And then, like, he's currently, he was trying to read this book on like I think it's on philosophy or something or the thoughts essays on this per this person this person's essays and he's just so bored to the point of where he just keeps looking at the clock and how he you know he's like he looks at the clock at one point and is like okay let me just read 25 more and read up to essay 25 and then I'll stop and then he's just it seems like a chore to him He's, like, forcing himself to read up to 20, the 25th F essay, and he's just, it's, like, he's bored and restless. So he does find a way to get something, at least one book, that he might be more excited about that he, he knows he, he's passionate about because he, ta he says that, I've read this book before, but it's okay. And he starts with the, fir with the sentence of, all unhappy families are like, or what is it? Let me see. I don't remember the quote. All happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. I'm sure. I don't know if you guys know where that quote is. But look, if you don't. Mm. And so, yeah. So, I'm enjoying this. Um, I like it. And, which is funny. I, I feel like, so far, I think I'm the opposite. When it comes to Russia, I'm the opposite from Olive, where she prefers the nonfiction over the fiction she all of her own book all of but I kind of lean towards the fiction more than the nonfiction although I've only read one nonfiction about Russia so maybe maybe not maybe I'll like other another nonfiction book about Russia who knows but we will see but anyway those are the books I'm currently reading um I guess I'm gonna do a reading plan video after I film this one okay so let me show you so the last book book that I bought was inspired by Rory Gilmore from Gilmore Girls so like this book is on her list of books to read and I recently was reminded of this book because someone was talking about it and was talking about what it's about and everything and over the years I've started to at first I was like I don't know if I was gonna like it because not every book on Rory's reading list is necessarily a book that's my cup of tea but then I kept hearing about it, and it was compared to Don Quixote, which, granted, I have not read it, but I know what that's about. So, I decided to get this book, Confederacy of Dunces. And it's actually a Pulitzer Prize winner. And, for, okay, and for some reason I'm thinking it was by John Williams, but John Williams, I think, is the composer guy. But, no, this is actually John... Same for saying John. John Kennedy Tool. Um, but the premise of it sounds really interesting. It actually sounds like something I might like. Um, okay, so. The, okay, I'm going to read the back of this. Now, how they describe him is just, it's what the book says. Okay, so I'm just reading what the book says. Um, a Confederacy of Dunces is an American comic masterpiece. John Kennedy Toole's hero, hero is a one Ignatius J. Riley. Huge, obese, fracturous, fastidious, a latter-day gargantuan, a Don Quixote of the French Quarter. He, his story bursts with wholly original characters, Desians of New Orleans, lower depths, incredibly true-to-life dialogue, and the zaniest series of high and low comic adventures. And, okay, so that's actually, that's not necessarily the description of what the book is about, but it's, 
It's actually a blurb from Henry Kissor of the Chicago Sun Times. Which by the way, that was so cool. In um Never Been Kissed, that was the newspaper that Josie Geller worked for, the Chicago Sun Times. So I thought that so that's really cool. But I figured I read this and I have thought about reading this along with Confederate Marie of Dunces, although the problem is like with the time I tried to read Station Eleven with um Stephen King's uh, I was just thinking about it yesterday. What is that book? It's one of the books I thought about bringing with me. Oh, The Stand. Now, of course, that station off is considerably shorter than The Stand. And granted, this is shorter than Don Quixote, but it's longer than, say, it's much longer than Station Eleven. So. Yeah, I mean, it's only, um, it's almost 400 pages. Let me see. Yeah, it's almost. It's not there, but it's almost. Um, but just the idea of this guy being like a Don Quixote type and just seeing the world in a different way and seeing himself in this um, pretentious, over-exaggerated way, like thinking of himself as this figure that he isn't in the end, which... You know what? Much like let them do it. Like I what I like on like you know is just I love the idea where people feel that way and it's like let them do it. Let them let those characters live that way and to feel that way about themselves. As long as it's not harming anybody. Granted, Don Quixote, some of his actions could potentially harm people because he does see himself as this hero type, save the damsel in distress. So he might actually harm people that he's that are not actual threat. But still, I mean, but like I said, in some cases, as long as it's not harming anybody, and the worst they can do is annoy you, or like you kind of roll your eyes at their behavior and they're, you know, propping themselves up and trying to make them, you know, think of themselves in a very egotistical way. So yeah, Don Quixote, yeah, I could see where that could be harmful because he thinks he's a hero in a novel. Um, but anyway, so I thought about that, but you know, so I don't know. Like I said, every time I buy a new book, I'm like, I want to read this right now. And then after a time, I'm sitting, I leave it sitting there and then move on from it because I'm in the middle of other books and trying to read other books. So yeah, there's that one. Confederacy of Dunces. Which I'm guessing that's what they call him. To him, the characters that don't see things his way. Um, okay, so the books I ended up getting on Kindle that I'm counting as February, even though apparently according to Amazon I got them on January 31st. But I'm counting them as February purchases. Um, First one is oh. oh crap. First one I got was Stoner by John Williams. Oh, that's why I was thinking about John Williams. Because he's the author of this book. So there is a John Williams that's an author. Um so I think it's about I wanna say it's about a professor or something, or maybe he's a student, I don't know. But it kind of gives me, from what I've heard, it kind of gives me, like, dark academia vibes. But, like I said, maybe he, well, he looks older, so I think he's probably a professor. Which, every time I see the title, I think, oh, is he getting, you know, getting head up in the, you know, um... Every time I see that title, but maybe not. I think maybe that could potentially be the guy's last name. But yeah, I keep thinking about reading that. And it is considered a classic. So let me go back. And then the other book that I got was this one. Ninth Rain by Jan Williams. This is a book that Elliot, Elliot Brooks has talked a lot about. It's one of her favorites. And the second book, I believe, is out. I don't know if 
how many books are gonna be in this or if it's just gonna be two books or more or like three books or more than that but it sounds it feels they talk about how it does a lot of interesting things with the fantasy with fantasy characters and the story and every fan, a fantasy story and there's I remember there's these fantasy creatures that are like vampires in the story and I wish I could remember some of the things that Ellie Brooks has talked about in the book that is in it um but I don't remember I just know that I was interested in reading it some of the ideas and some of the in the premise sounded really interesting so there's that Ninth the Rain by Jen William by what is it by Jen Williams yep Jen Williams Okay, so it is a trilogy. It says trilogy at the top. So those are, those are the two. Um, but yeah, the sequel is called Bitter Twins. And I do want to get... Um, that Ryan Cahill book. Of um, something of blood and something. It has a similar title to... Of blood and fire a similar title to that one book by um george r. r martin about the targaryen family so that is how things are going right now those are the books i recently purchased and um that is what i'm currently reading so i'm gonna i've read a little bit more of a gentleman in moscow this morning so I'm gonna probably this afternoon I'm gonna start reading um the Crusades ne I'm gonna start reading the Crusades next um it's my afternoon read um and I'm gonna look at my shelf and try to you know put some of these books back that I've taken down and focus on certain books in February um Here's what, when I take a bunch of books off my shelf, the one thing I struggle with is that I don't want to put them back because I'm like, oh, you know, what if, again, they sit there for a long period of time and I don't go back to them. Of course, I can't really, there's, you know, I've talked to complained about my friends to this and I feel like I've said the same thing over and over again. And then I would talk to my parents with anything, but then I'm worried that my mom would be all like, would tell me, then if you think you're going to forget about it, why'd you buy the book? Which, that's not how my brain works. Because I don't completely forget. It's still in the back of my mind. But I feel like, like a lot of booktubers, I feel like it could potentially get further and further down the list of book of to be read pile. But, anyway. So, that is how it's going right now. Um, I would love to know how your reading is going in February. Do you have a TBR for February? Are you a romance reader? Do you read romance in February? Because it is Valentine's week month. Um, although it's funny because Valentine's Day is halfway through the month and then, you know, it's done. Or do you, I mean, are you, you know, reading books that, have, that celebrate Black History Month? Because that is this month and, um... I would love to know if you're reading any books about that, and I don't know what I'm going. To, I don't know what I'm going to read next, um, but we will see. And I did talk about doing a Jane Austen theme, but now I'm starting to be like, oh, I'm going to read other books instead. But anyway, um, I will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.